Hello my friends, welcome to another great tutorial. This will be the third tutorial of the uh, .NET Core Web API tutorial series. So in this one I would like to continue the uh, where we left from the second video, the second tutorial. So if you guys don't know what is Web API and if you guys are new to .NET Core and if you guys would like to know how to use web apis in your projects i encourage you to go back on on my other two videos and start from the first one because this one is based on the first one and the second video so in this one i would like to continue on the other two http verbs which are put and delete so in the previous one we have covered get and post uh, so Without further ado, let's start on the put method. So I'll quickly do the last, uh, the post method, just as a quick recap. So in here, as you guys can see, when when the client does HTTP post request to the server on this URL, and the client is passing this complex object product in JSON format. Uh, and we don't use any logic uh, save to db here for now but we just use the data store as the memory cache uh, module in sp.net core and we store our product using the product the key as the product id and the object is the product and we return success uh, http 200 back to the client so here you can actually send uh, maybe like a success message as well another object and saying uh, we have successfully created the object uh, the resource on the server side and we save it but for now i'll just stick to what we have done in the past tutorial so if you were to uh, use the put method so the put requires two parameters as per the standard you need the id the to locate the resource on the server side and the uh, what needs to be updated on that resource so since we are using the product as our uh, main uh, context here i'll uh, use the same thing here so in the real world actually you don't need the um, you don't need to pass the id when you want to create the object because the ID inside here, this should actually come from the database. So this uh, this is uh, this will be a primary key when we move into the entity framework. But for now, as for the demonstration, I'm passing the ID from the client side. But actually, it should generate in this call, and then we use it to uh, set the, send the uh, to associate the product. But here we are still using the same mechanism. So the client will send the ID and the product. But this actually has the ID inside of this as well. Uh, but for now, um, I will stick to this plan. But as I explained earlier, this shouldn't this shouldn't be actually come from the client side. So so what we need to do is once the client sent the id we need to go to the so i'll write down the steps first uh, check memory based on the id so put represent update so then we update So what we have to do is we have to first find out whether we have the ID or not. So we can use memory dot uh, try get value. So you have to pass the ID and the output is the product. So so we can define the new uh, uh, product here. So I'll create the object here. Uh, 
Um, then you can use this. Yeah. So this is a check condition. So what you can do, you can actually check whether we have this. So if you have the product, let's declare it here. Then what you can do is this is actually the updating product. So like this. Yep, we haven't used it yet. So what we can do is if we can if we have the product, so this means means the product does exist in the uh, memory. So from here, then we can use our new product, the up, the updating product here. So what we can do is um, we can get this and we can update the name and we can get the new request and find the object and assign it. So we don't change the IDs here. We just need the update the name of the product. And then finally, we um, we update the uh, memory on the new product. So we use the ID and the new one. So updating product. Okay, so this means if you send the number one as per our example, and what we are doing here is we check whether it's existing in the memory. If it does, then we update the name to the new name of the product and we are updating the cache. So let's try and let's see how it works. So I'll run the project. Okay, and let's uh, first create the product. So I'll put product ID is one and I'll put um, milk as the product name. Let's create the product, okay? We can check the product from here. Yes, so the product name is milk. And now if I were to update the product, what you have to do is, I need to call the um, put method. So the same request, but the HTTP type is put. So in the body, We need to send the new context, the content in the JSON. So instead of milk, we put banana. We keep the same ID so it can access the memory and find the product and we update the, to banana. So if I send this request now, I should hit here and we got the ID is one and the product is banana for the ID. Let's step into the code and see what's going to happen. So we create the object and we are trying to access the memory and find out the corresponding object for ID1. Okay, so we have it and we have this become true. If you can see here, then we are updating the old name is milk and we are updating to banana. So we did that. Now we are using the same key to update the instance to banana okay so that's done so the client get 200 so that means if we access the product one now the id one we should get banana instead of the milk there we go so that's how the update works on uh, web api and let's quickly do a delete so if I were to delete again, it's very simple on the web API, you just pass the ID. So which ID you want to delete. Again, so we can quickly 
uh, write the delete it's very simple just uh, remove from the memory and the id id is the key also you can perform this check operation here and you can send something back to the client if it is not available in the memory and those things so for example here we can put like um, return uh, so you can put like return uh, not found you can do this here you can do return okay so if everything is okay we say 200 we can do the same thing here so i'll quickly copy this well, let me quickly check whether we have any other method that we can check without accessing the um, without creating the object so try I think that's the only one we have. So for now, I just keep this on. And I'll show you guys how you can delete the object from the memory. But for when we move into the entry framework, I'll show you in detail how we can actually handle these situations clearly. Okay, so let's create two objects and let's create one. So Let's run the project and I'll run. So let's create it again. Milk. So I create milk and we'll create this as um, uh, maybe um, banana. So now we should have two objects. We can access from here and see whether we have them in the memory. So first one is milk. Second product is banana. So here you can update uh, again. I'm not going to do the update now. Instead of that, I'm going to do the delete. So the same URL, but it's a delete operation. So now what you're going to do is you're going to delete uh, uh, product one. So product one is milk. So we should hit here and should delete it. So let's run it quickly. Yes, got it. Okay, so we got 200. So now if I access number two, okay, did I delete number two or number one? Okay, I delete number one. Yes, so number two is still in the memory. So if I access number one now, we shouldn't have it. There we go, 204, no content. So it actually hit here. So let's try, actually I haven't done any uh, error response back to the client. So that is why you guys don't see anything when you access. So, okay. So I think that's it for now, guys. Uh, do you guys understand the concept of um, get, put, post, and delete? So uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please put, please put the comments on the below. Um, always, I would like to help, and I will get back to you guys as soon as I can. And for the next one, uh, since we covered all the basic uh, HTTP verbs, I would do the, uh, I was used the Entity Framework core module, and we will use SQL Server as the backend, and we, we can do more fun on that one. And uh, we can build our web API on top of this project. As always, thanks for the support, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Happy coding.